The Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, or WADK, is the successor to the Windows Automated Installation Kit, or WAIK, again with those renaming Microsofties. Actually, this set of tools goes back even further to when it was called the BDD, or Business Desktop Deployment Kit. Whatever it's called, by now it's grown to about 6 gigs of tools, and they're free as long as you don't count how much time it takes to learn it all. Now, you can do a lot with the WADK, and we're not even going to talk about the assessment parts that you can use to test and optimize Windows startup and media streaming performance. The deployment tools allow us to build boot images that we can use to launch and install, create an answer file to customize the way Windows setup works, build a reference computer, and an install image from that computer that we can then clone throughout Globomantics so that everybody has a similar Windows 10 setup, modify and maintain that image over time, for example, by injecting new drivers or updates into it, and something new in Windows 10 creates something called a provisioning package that seems best suited for applying mid-course corrections to systems that are already up and running. So, to get on the same page with the terminology, a boot image is typically a WIM file, Windows imaging file, that can start a computer and get it ready for an operating system. An answer file is an XML text file that Windows Setup refers to during an operating system install, for example, to customize the installation in an automatic fashion. A reference computer is a fully set up machine that we want to clone for deployment throughout an organization or perhaps a department. An install image is usually, again, a WIM file that contains Windows 10 plus optional applications that we may wish to deploy along with the operating system. And a provisioning package can be used by IT admins to fine-tune an existing installation or an existing install image. WIM files, by the way, wrap up boot images and install images in a convenient standard container that is understood by the WADK and also by the other tools that we'll look at in the next module. Now, there's other content in the WADK, such as the Application Compatibility Toolkit which you might use to address incompatibilities between applications and Windows, although, frankly, there shouldn't be terribly many of those because the Windows 10 kernel isn't that different from Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. The user state migration tools help manage the user settings export and import during a Windows migration scenario. And we're not going to discuss the performance or assessment toolkits here as they don't pertain directly to deployment. The volume activation management tool, or VAMT, helps us manage the activation procedure, and SQL Server is necessary for the ACT. So what we might do next is demo the installation of the WADK, and we'll compress that through the magic of computer video so that it doesn't take as long here as it does in real life. So here's my Windows 10 Workstation GM-WS1, and uh, we've got the ADK over here, so we can open this guy up and run the ADK setup. So we specify the location where we want the uh, files to go. We'll accept the default value. And we have to decide whether we want to participate in the uh, Microsoft Improvement Program. We'll decline that so as not to send data to Microsoft. We'll read every word carefully of the license agreement before accepting it. And here are the features that we want to install. Now, we're not going to install the ACT. We will install the deployment tools. WinPE, the ICD, the USMT, and the VAMT, just for good measure. We'll skip the Performance and Assessment Toolkit and Services, and we don't need SQL Server. So we'll just install these pieces. And after what I can tell you was a very exciting 15 minutes, we have the Windows ADK for Windows 10 fully installed, and uh, we can click the checkbox if we want to go online and learn more about it. So what I'm going to do at this point is navigate over here to the Start menu, 
And I can go up here to all apps, which indicates, hey, there's something new out there. And we see some recently added pieces. If I scroll down and the word new tells me there's something new there and there are the new pieces. So what I'm going to do actually for convenience is I'm going to right click some of these and pin them to the start screen. So these are the pieces that I'm mainly interested in. And then I think what I'd like to do is name the group. And now I have them conveniently available on the start screen and they're ready to rock and roll as we move to the next topic, which is creating a boot image.